While the title of this video might seem quite sensational at first glance, the truth is that the story I'm about to tell you is most definitely one of perseverance, courage and accomplishment. That will hopefully teach you a thing or two about photography itself, but also, and more importantly, of what it takes to be a photographer. Meet the story of Ruth Orkin and her incredible bike trip across the USA. about rules, I don't necessarily mean photographic rules, but rather rules or preconceived notions, if you will, of a given space and time. Try to picture this, you're a woman living between the 1940s and 1950s. What is expected of you? What activities, quote unquote, are designed for you? These are the types of rules or stereotypes that I feel Ruth Orkin broke. She led an incredible life full of adventure and pioneering steps as a female photographer. Now, personally, I don't like to make a distinction between uh, female and male photographers. Um, I have done that in titling before, only for titling purposes. But I feel that here it is important to reference, um, you know, Ruth Orkin's gender, because I feel that it is part or one of the many, many reasons as to why this story was also so remarkable and, you know, newspapers were kind of covering this back then and etc. And I feel as though um, this, his, this story uh, speaks to her character and perseverance as we'll see throughout this video. Miss Orkin left her house on the evening of May 31st, 1939 for what is commonly referred to as her solo cross-country journey across the United States by bike. But let me put it in more correct terms. It was a journey taken with her bike. That is because she traveled long distances by car, train and bus, using her bicycle only for visiting main cities. Her journey started with a lift from Los Angeles to Chicago, arriving to the latter on June 4th, 1939. After exploring Chicago, she took another lift on June 13 towards New York, and on June 21st, she was bound to Philadelphia, this time by bike. There were roughly 110 miles to cover, and after 95 miles, Ruth wrote in her diary, she was already dead. She stayed in youth hostels and family members' houses, visiting the city's most notable sites and just doing kind of like the general touristic thing. But by July the 2nd, she reached Washington by car, where she visited the White House and tried to be seen by the president, who was, quote, too busy to see her. She then returned to New York City by train on July 9th. And if you're puzzled why she was nearly seen or thought she could be seen by the president, it was because throughout this trip, Ruth Orkin became a sort of celebrity. As reporters put it back then, quote, her age, the bike, staying in youth hostels, which was a relatively new concept back then, and the fact that she was a female traveling solo were the recipe for a good story. So there was no shortage of news articles about her and her trip, leading Orkin to realize the importance of one thing, commonly known as self-branding, or these days, self-promotion. So during her trip, she became somewhat of a publicity agent for a brand that was herself and her photography. But anyways, before we move on to talk about her photography in particular and what we can take from it, I just wanted to quickly mention to you how this trip sort of ended um, and kind of like the miles that she did um, and show you, of course, some of the photos of her return home. So after devoting some weeks to attend the New York World's Fair, she decided to then travel along the east coastline between Providence and Westport. And near New Haven, she met other people cycling around the country. And so they decided to cycle together. And near Madison, they ended up taking their maiden flights, ending up in Boston. Around this time, she decided to return to California, changing buses 12 times over the course of five days until she reached California. 
Sorry for interrupting the video here, guys. I just wanted to take a moment to talk about today's sponsor, Filmora. I've been using Filmora since last year to edit different segments of my videos, apply different effects and transitions to make my videos more dynamic. As an editing software, I found Filmora to have a very intuitive interface since most of the effects, media and templates are readily accessible in the upper left menu and all I have to do is drag them down to the timeline and apply them to my video. To make changes or even to do some quick and small color adjustments, I access the panel at the right side of my screen. Filmora, however, is constantly adding new tools to improve user experience, such as the AI music generator, which allows thousands of combinations of music genres and themes, therefore allowing users to generate music exactly how they envision to their videos. Filmora is available to download for free, links will be down below, and I'd like to thank Fulmora yet again for sponsoring another video here on the channel. Now let's go back to Ruth Orkin. Now the way I uncovered Ruth Orkin's story was actually a big, big coincidence. I have um, a series on the members community here on YouTube where I pick up um, photography articles and I discuss them with people and basically to the members and talk about different photography aspects or photographers etc and one of those articles that I had selected was um, about Ruth Orkin so I knew a little bit about her uh, generally speaking and then recently I actually visited Paris and coincidentally enough I don't know but maybe it was meant to be um, and my hotel was like literally 10 minutes away from the car Bresson Foundation that had an exhibition on Ruth Orkin. So I decided to visit that exhibition where I got this book. Now, this is super important because it has been the basis of this video um, because there's not there's a lot of information out there um, in terms of articles around um, about Ruth Orkin, but I think this book really allowed me to understand um, her personality, her person, um, and kind of like the reasoning behind this trip, a bit more about her career, and I think um, as well to see some of her images more close. There are some clippings as well, and some interesting um, facts about her story. And she had an amazing life story. And um, basically on this book, or in this book rather, um, there's a note that was made by the curators where they talk about um, amateur work and avant-garde. Now, a lot of people look at Ruth Orkin's photos. I mean, she was only 17. They consider her an amateur photographer. They consider her photos amateur. Um, but I think it's interesting to look at it from a scope of like, what does it mean to be an amateur photographer or how an amateur photographer, in many ways, you need to have a degree of that in order to push the boundaries or to be open. And I wanted to quote um, something that I read here and also the words of Man Ray, who was, you know, an amazing artist in his own name. And look, I know that people will call avant-garde something that sometimes has really no value or at least you don't think that is that avant-garde. But in here, I just wanted to propose something. And I'm going to quote to you the words of Man Ray for that matter. Could a photographer not take an amateur photograph and do something new with it? And here, by something new, he's referring to creating something avant-garde. Um, when we look at his work, this is very, very perceptible. But I think in here, the answer is that I believe so. Some of the greatest advancements of mankind have also happened by accident or in a somewhat amateurish nature. For instance, from Newton getting hit in the head by an apple, which is a complete accident, to the first photographers who accidentally discovered double exposure, blur, and other effects. Without experimentation here, there is no advancement. And sometimes this experimenting happens precisely when and where we can run the most risks. In Ruth Orkin's story, what she was doing was for herself. So she was recording things her own way, and while doing so, people recognized value in her, quote, amateur experimentation. 
Some of these photos have what we can consider for this photographic period in time, very unconventional angles, very high or low. And then we have what I consider to be the idea of building a frame within a frame within another frame. That is because some of her most interesting photos, in my eyes, are the ones where she includes the frame of her bike within the frame she's already building. And I think these were somewhat unconventional for the time. Although some people might consider this to be the fruit of Orkin's amateur status, I think that's where the key lies. She was experimenting, she was happy to document things her own way. In fact, her main concern was to, quote, record memories. So most of her negatives were developed in drugstores and she'd receive small batches of her sometimes out of focus, under or overexposed pictures. And so in this case, I dare to say that if we look at someone like Robert Frank, who has somewhat of a similar visual style in the sense that sometimes these photos are underexposed, are not necessarily straight, um, they're kind of grainy and etc. And we see this has value um, because, for instance, when we look at the Americans, he was going on a personal journey or on a journey through America um, and basically uh, he just came out with this book and it's an amazing book. I've talked about it on the channel. I'll probably leave the link somewhere to that video around here. But I think it's super important to make this comparison because because if we see, you know, value in his photos, why can't we see or try to see value in her photos? Anyways, if you're curious about Ruth Orkin, she went on to moving to New York, becoming a professional photographer, taking on her own clients and producing photo essays for different magazines such as Look or Esquire. In one of those assignments, she made a stopover in Italy where she met a girl by the name of Jinx Allen, an American who had been also traveling alone. And while in conversation, the two decided to produce a satirical account of the situations they had faced while traveling alone. One particular image from the essay was titled American Girl in Italy, which became extremely famous, particularly in street photography's history, due to the nature of the male reaction to the female presence. Orkin would go on to marry photographer and filmmaker Maurice Engel, with whom she collaborated on The Little Fugitive in 1953, an Oscar-nominated movie, which was simultaneously internationally recognized as one of the first truly studio-independent movie. Which I think is extremely inspirational for all of us to push ourselves and run risks. I was curious as to why she would take this sort of endeavor. Um, and during the exhibition I felt as though like maybe um, there was a note and I missed it or something, but there wasn't really a, a note as to possibly why. So I wanted to understand her personality or why she would do this. And so there were several reasons. I think obviously her personality, the way this book describes her and articles online, she was, you know, someone who was adventurous, who or curious, who wasn't afraid of taking risks in terms of doing things. Um, and I think that's something that, you know, is quite unique in someone's personality. And I think, you know, we should all be more like her. Um, but also there's a lot of things connected to her life, you know, in her biographical note, biographical note in this book. Um, they refer that, you know, when she was 13, she was already accompanying her father on business trips across the US by train. Um, and one of her idols was Amelia Earhart. So, you know, connected to another mode of transportation, aviation in this case. Um, she had moved, um, you know, I think her mother, I believe, wanted to be an actress, so they had moved to California. So there was a lot of movement. There was a lot of, you know, uh, events that were connected to transportation and to kind of like being adaptable and versatile in her life that I think made her that way. Of course, we all are made by the circumstances of our lives, and I think that contributed a lot to the this sort of like uh, adventurous spirit. And yeah, I think that's, uh, I was satisfied with this answer uh, once I got it from this book. And I highly recommend checking out, um, you know, more about Ruth Orkin. Links will be down below her website where some of these pictures came from, but I also like um, more information on the exhibition that I went to. Um, hopefully they'll have some of these books online. I don't know, but you'll probably find out. And yeah, I guess that that was it. So I hope you stay safe, keep shooting, keep creating, keep learning, and I'm out. Peace.